we focus on history, culture, religion, art, social, and philosophy of Nusantara. Here, in the presence of Nusantara, we were made to be forgotten about the goodness of ourselves. Because negativity seems to be more interesting for us. Now, I'm Sutoyo Raharta and friends assist you to remind you, to awaken you that we still can find the gems of Nusantara. They are the great sites of Nusantara. Okay, good morning, Venerable Dr. Eliate Metea, Paleistics, Bachelor Degree, Master Degree, and PhD in MCU. He is a lecturer of Faculty of Buddhism, Mahajula Longkorn University in Thailand. Venerable Sir, good morning. Good morning. Who spread Buddhism to Sri Lanka for the first time? Uh, according to the chronicles, as we know, that uh, the history of Buddhism and the kingship in Sri Lanka has been recorded in the chronicles uh, for a like kind of unbroken, like an uh, unbroken tradition. Uh, even though it was written in the 5th century AD, but uh, the writer of the chronicles that exists 4th century AD, there was another chronicle, Deepavansa. In the 5th century AD, there is a chronicle uh, named Mahavansa. So, but all these chronicles uh, most probably has used previous existing data to, uh, to write to compose these chronicles. Therefore, uh, the history of Buddhism in Sri Lanka starts in the uh, with the third uh, Buddhist council, which was held in uh, Pataliputra, India, in the time of King Ashoka. Uh, but the history of the Sri Lanka Sinhalese people in uh, the Lanka, or that that time called uh, Tambapanni. Uh, dated back to the time of the time when the Buddha passed away, according to the chronicles. So, uh, an Aryan king in the uh, northern part of uh, India arrived in Sri Lanka, then settled down in Sri Lanka, and then started this uh, Sinhalese uh, population in the country. But according to the chronicles, again, uh, there is a mention of uh, native people living in the Sri Lanka at that time uh, who were called in the chronicles as uh, yakshas, uh, demons, uh, devas, uh, deities, and uh, nagas, uh, serpents. But actually, uh, nowadays, the scholars think that they were not actually those demons, serpents, or of such kind, but they were just people who worshipped or who believed in uh, demons or yakshas or as being called as yakka and the other things as well who believed in deities uh, gods were called devas and who believed in serpents and uh, naga kings in, in such manner were called nagas so then after the arrival of the first settlers singly settlers from india then they uh, however managed to populate the country but there were another rounds of people uh, who came from India and joined with these people, these first settlers, and then uh, the population uh, expanded throughout the island. And uh, when talking about uh, spreading of Buddhism in Sri Lanka, according to the chronicles, there are mentioned about the Buddha visiting Sri Lanka to several places. But the actual establishment of Buddhism in Sri Lanka be 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 begins with the arrival of Arahant Mahinda. Arahant Mahinda, according to the uh, chronicles, is the son of uh, King Asoka the Great. The Emperor Asoka the Great had uh, a son uh, named uh, Mahinda. He later became Arahant Mahinda, became a monk and uh, became an Arahant. Uh, so he 
as we know, after the third Buddhist council, uh, Sangayana, they sent missionaries to uh, throughout the uh, world, we can say, through, uh, out of India to spread the message of the Buddha. Uh, one of those missionaries was sent, was sent to Sri Lanka, uh, led by Arahan Mahinda, who was the son of King Asoka, and several other monks. Uh, according to the rec records, the, it says another four people uh, came to Sri Lanka to spread this message of Buddhism. This happened around uh, third century before Christ. Uh, but according to the traditional belief, this happens about uh, 236 years after the demise of the Buddha, after the passing away of the Buddha. And when Arahant Mahinta visited Sri Lanka at that time. Uh, the king of the country was Devanam Piyatissa, who ruled the land island from uh, Anuradhapura as being the capital city. Then he met with uh, Arahant Mahinta at a certain place. The place is now called, uh, that time also called Mihintale. Uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, Sinhalese language is called Mihintale. Uh, at that point. And when the king met with the, this group of monks uh, who were wearing such uh, strange outfits to them, to him at that time, because uh, in the chronicles, uh, they, uh, the, the writer has uh, stressed the fact that the king and the people at that time never have uh, encountered with the monk before. So th 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 this point is very important considering the fact, uh, the, 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 the fact of establishment of Buddhism in Sri Lanka, because uh, the chronicles and later commentaries suggested that the news of Buddhism or uh, encounter of a monk didn't happen before that time. So when the king uh, saw this uh, group of monks, uh, he was kind of startled and he was uh, kind of uh, afraid who, uh, again, we have to say that when the king met with these monks, the, the leader, the Varahan Mahinta, called the, the king by his name. Uh, his name was Devanam Piyatissa, but his uh, name uh, actually was Tissa, a uh, common name. Therefore, he was uh, addressed by these people with his name which was unusual at that time because we know uh, the kings are not usually addressed by people by their names they have to be uh, your highness in that manner right therefore the king was kind of uh, uh, startled as who dared call me by my name and so he asked who are you who are you and then the uh, Arahant Mahinda explained, uh, we are the monks from uh, Jambudipa, uh, and we are the disciples of the uh, king of the Dhamma, the Buddha. And then the, he, the king remembered, or he heard, because uh, he have heard of this Buddhism being spread in that India uh, from the news. Therefore, uh, he remembered, so he thought he did, these people must be those monks. And then he invited them to come to the uh, city, but the group refused and they wanted to stay there. Uh, and when the king met with the Arahan Mahinda, he kind of, before preaching any doctrine to the king, he kind of uh, evaluated his wit or his intelligence by asking some kind of uh, questions. Uh, the questions were the Thera, the, the uh, Mahinda Thera asked the king, uh, pointing to a certain tree at that nearby uh, premises being a mango tree, what, what is the name of this tree? The king replied, it is a mango tree. And again, the, uh, the uh, Thera asked, are there any mango trees in this country? Uh, 
the king replied, yes, there are, uh, of course there are. And again, the, uh, the monk, the Thayer asked, are there any other trees other than these, these mango trees, the other mango trees? The king replied, yes, there are many other trees in this country. And again, the, the, uh, the Thayer asked, are there any other trees other than the other mango trees and the other trees which are not mango trees? And uh, so this is kind of confusing question, but uh, as the king being a kind of intelligent person, he replied, yes, this mango tree, which is here, because in that question, this, this the first mango tree was not included in the question. So in this manner, the the, the Venerable Thera, Arahan Thera Mahinda uh, kind of evaluated or assessed the uh, intelligence level of the king. And also another question comes after, uh, should I be mentioning it at, the, at this point or is it being too long? Yes, yes, it's enough. Um, before Buddhism arrived in Sri Lanka, before Venerable Mahinda brought Buddhism to Sri Lanka, what was the local religion of Sri Lanka by that time? Um, uh, at that time, most probably Brahmanism existed in that time and also other cults of worshipping the devas, gods, or worshipping the uh, departed ones, worshipping the demons existed in Sri Lanka at that time, and a kind of Naga serpents existed at that time. Uh, from the names of the people at that time, it has suggested uh, to us uh, those things existed. As for some people named Mahanaga, Naga means uh, a serpent, so he ruled the a certain part of the uh, country. So these things suggested that these kind of uh, belief systems existed at that time. And also worshiping the trees, uh, believing that there are goats residing in trees also existed in Sri Lanka at that time. And do they still exist by this time? Uh, kind of, because uh, even the Buddhism uh, arrived in Sri Lanka, but it kind of the local beliefs which were there kind of assimilated with Buddhism and pre, uh, coexisted with Buddhism uh, throughout the history. Even today, we can see there are people who believe in these demons, yakas, and people who think there are nagas, uh, serpents of, with uh, those miraculous powers, and also this uh, worshiping of tree, especially the Bodhi tree, we can say very. Uh, influential in Sri Lanka or widespread in Sri Lanka than any other country, Buddhist country in the world. So, but my question is, actually, is there any Naga, is there any Yaka, is there any uh, this kind of uh, creatures in Buddhism though, before Buddhism entered Sri Lanka? Before Buddhism entered Sri Lanka? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, before I mean, Buddhism entered Sri Lanka, before, if you can Buddhism, remember... Yeah, before Buddhism entered Sri Lanka, is there any story of Naga in Buddhism itself? Or Naga, Yaka is influenced by Sri Lanka people to enter Buddhism stories? Yeah, of course, the story of uh, the Buddha visiting Sri Lanka associated with all these uh, Yakas and Nagas and Devas in the country. And also, if you can remember the Ramayana, the story of Ramayana, which is not actually a Buddhist uh, in that sense, but the kingdom of Lanka, where is the land of Ravana is actually Sri Lanka, is believed to be being Sri Lanka, the island of Sri Lanka. Therefore, the story of Yakshas or demons or uh, residing in this island has been for a long period of time not even uh, we can see from this ramayana the story of ramayana where this demon king ravana and all those yaksas living there and also when the uh, prince vijaya who was the first settler of uh, singhalese race in this island encountered with yakas or demons yak residing in this country who is prince vijaya prince vijaya huh. is uh, the first set, 
the leader of the first settlers of Sinhalese race, Sinhalese people into this island that I mentioned, where according to the chronicles, it is stated Prince Vijay from uh, a, a, a certain kingdom in uh, Northern India arrived as the first Aryan settlers in this country. So he's the Prince Vijay. He was the first, actually the first king according to of the Sri Sinhalese race, Sinhalese uh, people, uh, according to the chronicles. Okay, so actually there are so many local, Sri Lankan local stories also influence Buddhism. Uh, there are, uh, yeah, throughout the history of Sri Lanka, we can see involvement of yaksas, or be, uh, belief in the yakas or naga serpents happening in the country. Okay, okay, okay. When Buddhism arrived in Sri Lanka, what subject did they teach to Sri Lankan people at that time? Because it seems that Buddhism is so uh, for 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 normal people, Buddhism was so not so easy to understand. Right, uh, life is too tough. <laughs> But um, what was the first subject that uh, they, uh, they, they teach to Sri Lankan people? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, the, the uh, Arahant Mahinda Thera, he interviewed, kind of interviewed and evaluated the intelligence of the king by asking those certain questions. And afterwards, when the time comes for the, the Arahant Mahinda Thera to preached the doctrine, he chose uh, Chula Hatti Padopama Sutta. It is stated in the chronicles and also in the commentaries, the uh, most venerable Thero uh, preached this to the uh, group of Sri Lankan Sinhalese uh, people who gathered there at the first, first meeting. Uh, Chula Hatti Padopama Sutta consists of, it's, it's actually very appropriate Sutta to to be preached to these people who encountered Buddhism for the first time. Because uh, as I mentioned earlier that they didn't have any idea or any clue about what who this group of people were and what Buddhism really is. Therefore, in the Chula Hatti Padavam Sita, we can see uh, it's a uh, sutta in the Majjhima preached by uh, the Buddha to a certain Brahmin. And they are the uh, Buddha, the, the, as the name indicates, Chulla Hatti Padapama means a uh, footprint of the, an el an, the elephant. This means when a person goes to the uh, forest and see the, an elephant, he, he thinks, but this is actually a very, a very good bull elephant, but it is not so. In, in that, it, that's the, what's the comparison, a simile of this story. But the essence of the story is, um, it's kind of explaining the what really the who really the Buddha is in a manner, and the most important part is what is the nature or the characteristic or the practice of a monk, a Buddhist monk, a bhikkhu, is very well uh, stressed in this sutta as being uh, it is according to the sutta it says uh, a person having heard the Dhamma preached by the Buddha, uh, becomes pleased with the, have faith in the, in the teaching of the Buddha or become, becomes pleased with the teaching of the Buddha. And he then practice the control of his, uh, his uh, body and speech in a manner, in which manner and this, which is the morality part. And also then comes to the part where he actually enters into this uh, Janic uh, levels, first, second, third, fourth, uh, these uh, Janic or absorptions, entering into these absorptions. And then with the uh, attainment of um, uh, the other knowledges of uh, previous existences, and with the attainment of uh, the knowledge about the next existences. And finally, through the asavakkhyana, the knowledge of eradication of the taints, how he attains the 
uh, liberation. So here is a very good sutta he chose here because uh, as you know the the people were wondering who were the, these people. It is kind of introducing them who we really are, who are the monks uh, who are conversing with your people. So this is the first sutta cho uh, chosen by the uh, Thera to preach the doctrine to the the country. So it's to the people. It's kind of meditation, yeah. They teach about meditation. Uh, no, uh, yeah, not not only meditation. You cannot say meditation because it starts with the entering into the stream of being a Buddhist monk, having heard the Dhamma from the Buddha and having faith or pl being pleased with the teaching of the Buddha and and, and thinking that this uh, life of a lay person is full of uh, difficulties to practice the Buddhism and then choose the way of a monk and enter the enter enter the monkhood or priesthood and then uh, practicing the sila morality and then practicing uh, the concentration uh, meditation and then entering the uh, panya or the wisdom section which is uh, eradication of the taint so this is a very uh, how it's a comprehensible uh, this instruction or explanation about who we really are who a monk really is what is our practice what is our nature what is our characteristics so that made them be pleased with the monks and then they became uh, went to the refuge in the triple gems. Okay, sir. My next question: What is bodhisattva actually? Yeah. When talking about bodhisattva, the thing that comes to your most of the people's mind is that must be something related to Mahayana Buddhism. Right. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is what uh, we normally think when uh, assume or think when we hear the term bodhisattva. But the bodhisattva is not a concept alien to Buddhism since the beginning. Even in Theravada, there are so many uh, data, information, doctrines related to bodhisattva concept. Uh, but the Bodhisattva concept evolved and developed into some other uh, deified versions or, and so and so in later period, that's another thing. But uh, the or, in original Buddhism, which we consider the Pali Tipitaka, the Pali Canon, there are many information regarding Bodhisattva. But Bodhisattva here doesn't really mean, uh, is not necessarily, necessarily similar to the bodhisattva we see in some uh, Mahayana sectors, but uh, this bodhisattva that we can see in the Tipitaka, in the Nikayas, is uh, a, a term used to refer to the Buddha before enlightenment. The Buddha before the enlightenment, whenever anybody refer to the Buddha before enlightenment, use the term bodhisattva to refer to him. So when analyze the factors that we can see in the Nikayas, we can uh, clearly see that this term was used to the Buddha before enlightenment. And that term has not been used to anybody else in that sense. Th therefore, the, this term was kind of reserved to the Buddha before our Gautama Buddha. And also we can see some accounts of some other Buddhas, the Pankara Buddha, and, before enlightenment being called as bodhisattva yeah also metta yeah uh, yeah also uh, bodhisattva metta is also mentioned in the tipitaka as well so, so bodhisattva and, is very special term just for the buddha to be right yeah at the beginning when we uh, analyze these uh, uh, tipitaka do uh, texts we can see it's a special term reserved to the Buddha before enlightenment, and also the Buddha before enlightenment. Uh, it is mentioned in the in the Nikayas in the suttas that the Buddha dwelled in the Tusita realm, Tusita celestial world. Also, that person is referred to as Bodhisattva as well. The person is the Tusita uh, is also called Bodhisattva in the uh, suttas, and as you can see, the what? 
As <laughs> you, you know, can I see. I want to ask whether in Theravada tradition, is it possible for us to use bodhisattva term for lay people like the Mahayana? <laughs> Uh, in according to their uh, the tradition, yes, they can. We can, because we have. The, uh, then we have to refer to another special uh, text that belongs to the Theravada tradition, which is the Jataka. In Jataka, it is uh, one of the canonical texts that belong to the Kuddha Nikaya of the Sutta Pitaka, and also uh, some people try to uh, underestimate Jataka saying that it's a later uh, compilation or so and so it can be. I, I heard not. that one, I heard that yeah. one. But, uh, but you had to mention that. Yeah, I also heard that Jataka was originated from Sri Lanka. Buddhism. Yeah, there are some uh, controversial cities, controversial uh, ideas regarding this matter. But we have to keep in mind that when even in the in the Tipitaka itself, in the Nikaya itself, when, when mentioning about the teaching of the Buddha as Navanga Sattu Sasana, the the nine factors of teaching of the Buddha, this is mentioned in the Nikayas as well. There is a mention of Jataka there. Sutta Gaya Vayakarana Jat Gatha Udana Itivuttaka Jataka Abhuta Dharma Vedala. Here we can see, we can see. Ja, uh, jataka uh, in this list therefore uh, somehow it existed in the very earliest period of uh, Theravada Buddhism as well the, uh, in in this Jataka uh, book there are many uh, stories uh, there are uh, uh, precisely 547 story birth stories of the Buddha before the enlightenment and here we can and see the Buddha was born as a human being, as a, an animal, and as a deity or celestial being. So when mentioning these factors, of course, the term the Bodhisattva can be referred even to an animal in this sense. Therefore, it is not actually that much reserved in the, when we consider these factors that belong to the Theravada Buddhism, and also the both the Buddha Vansa, Charya Pitaka are also another good examples of uh, the stories, birth stories of the Bodhisattvas. And uh, in the Buddha Vansa, especially, there is the uh, mention of these 10 Paramitas, Jarvis being uh, uh, essential, essential qualities that a person must uh, perfect in order to become a Buddha. What are the characters of Bodhisattva? Yeah, what are the characters of Bodhisattva? Yeah, as I just mentioned, the Bodhisattva at the first stage in the Nikayas as, uh, was strictly used to refer to the Bodhisattva, the Buddha before enlightenment. So characteristics was the intention to become a Buddha. The resolution, with the resolution to however attain the Buddhahood out of compassion. So these are the characteristics that we can see in the Nikayas. But in the Kuddhaka Nikaya, as I just mentioned, there's the Buddha Vansa, Charya Pitaka, and Jataka are uh, texts that have a lot of information regarding Bodhisattva. Here we can see in the, in the Buddha Vansa, 10 Paramitas, Dana, Sila, Nikamma, Panya, Virya, Kanti, Satcha, Adithana, Metta, Upekha. These 10 paramitas or perfections being the quality or the virtues that a person must perfect in different levels. Dana, Paparami, uh, Paparami, Paramatta Parami. So these are these uh, different levels of, uh, of, uh, or the deeper uh, level of the directors. Yeah. And so these 10 parameters must be perfected by a person to become a 
Buddha. So this can be regarded as the main characters of uh, Bodhisattva according to Theravada Buddhism. Okay. You, you write thesis on Bodhisattva idea in Sri Lanka. When was Bodhisattva idea introduced to Sri Lanka actually? Yeah, again, this comes to the what I mentioned earlier that when talking about Bodhisattva, we tend to think it was introduced to Sri Lanka in a later period by some Mahayanist uh, monks, but it's not the, not the case here. The thing is, it came to Sri Lanka most probably with the arrival of Buddhism into the country, but it was gi not given that much uh, attention or that much importance at the beginning, but uh, after a while, uh, there were certain other sects of monks came from India to Sri Lanka as well. And also most importantly, uh, in the, I mentioned that the Buddha was introduced to the country in the third century uh, BC. And by the time of second century BC, uh, th there was, another fraction or another tradition of uh, Buddhism appearing in the country. So that is called Abhayagiri, if you have heard it. The Abhayagiri faction is another sect that uh, originated in the uh, second century BC. So in this sec section or in this sect, they welcomed new ideas. They uh, accepted new traditions, new schools into them. So we can see, and by the time there were time, they were very popular in the country more than the original uh, Mahavihara sect. We called it Mahavihara, the original sect, the original school of Buddhism in Sri Lanka. And they were somewhat preserved or somewhat uh, conservative in that manner, but this sect, which or, uh, did which originated in the second century uh, BC, was somewhat open to new ideas and accepted new ideas and new uh, I, new theories regarding Buddhism, and therefore most probably uh, with this acceptance of new ideas and acceptance of people from. Uh, in other sectors of sects of monks from India, uh, there must have been this influence new of uh, bodhisattva uh, concept being uh, somewhat more important, more significant than it was previously before that. So there are two sects now or in Sri Lanka. Yeah, actually, uh, by that time there were by two, the time two, two, and... but later. By these two thousand years, how many sects they appear and disappear? Yeah, many, no many, many sects. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. And, and the present Buddhism in Sri Lanka, how many? Present Buddhism in Sri Lanka, only one. Okay, so yeah. Abhayagiri was already gone long time ago. Yeah, Abhayagiri and the later uh, there appeared another new sect or another new school of Buddhism uh, in the third century AD, third century uh, CE, which is uh, Jetavana fraction. Jetavana. They also were, were also very liberal, very open to new ideas, and they welcomed uh, a lot of newcomers or new ideas and monks from India who came to the island resided here and they spread the Buddhism and also at this time, by this time, Mahayana ideas or the ideas of Bodhisattva Avalokiteshwara has also introduced to the country. Oh, we can okay. see, yeah, we can okay. see from uh, from the chronicle itself and also from the uh, statues that we can have been carved throughout the country by this time uh, the the idea of Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva which is especially from the Mahayana tradition introduced to the country. Uh, so Avalokiteshvara came from India to Sri Lanka yeah? Yeah 
Okay, okay. And it was a female or male? I would say it was a male. Male, okay. Of course, male. male. And he had, and in the later period, there is another bodhisattva, we can see Tara. Oh, okay. okay. Tara bodhisattva is a female one. Okay. Tara in is, some, is like yeah. Tibetan Buddhism for now. Yeah, uh, also Tibetan Buddhism also, the, the, this uh, kind of Tibetan Buddhism also arrived in the country at that time. So Ta Avalokiteswara uh, arrived in Sri Lanka, Tara Bodhisattva also arrived in Sri, arrived Lanka. In Sri Lanka. And they still have status here? They are still can be found, a lot of statues scattered throughout the country. Oh, the, oh wow. About, yeah. So Meteya, I want to ask you whether you are the present uh, Sri Lanka Buddhism, whether it is Mahavira, Abhaya, uh, Abhaya Kiri, or Chitawana. The present Buddhism in yeah. Sri Lanka. Yeah. The present Buddhism in Sri Lanka, uh, in the, by the 12th century AD, by the king uh, Parakramba, who the first, who ruled, uh, from Polonnaruwa as the capital, because the, with the invasions of the, the Tamils kings, they, however, somehow shifted the capital from Anuradhapura to the Polonnaruwa. And also the places or the uh, Buddhist sites or temples were kind of abandoned at that time, uh, even though there must have been some people in, but the the, the focus of or the, the center of the country became Polonnaruwa. At that time, where was it located? Came, there? Polonnaruwa is uh, somewhat uh, and the, uh, east to the Anuradhapura. Okay, okay. This is the second capital after the falling of Anuradhapura. And this king, he it is mentioned, he united all the three sectors into one. But when we study this matter uh, more deeply, we can see what actually happened was that he already kind of eradicated other two sectors, which are Abhayagiri and Jetavana, and gave the, uh, asked them to be converted to Mahavihara tradition. So this is what happened. And afterwards, this Mahavihara tradition uh, lasted until today uh, with uh, as you know uh, sometimes the buddhism being declined in the country due to several factors be having invasions from tamil uh, kings and having uh, invasion from other european european uh, settlers uh, invade how to call it invaders uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and also dutch, internal yeah. factors yeah uh, dutch, Port dutch portuguese yeah or portuguese yeah. also uh, portuguese came first then Hollanda, Dutch, then English, English, they succeeded in uh, controlling whole island, but the previous to just a part of the country. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there were time, uh, uh, this Mahavira tradition was uh, brought to Thailand, to Burma. And also when the Buddhism declined in Sri Lanka, they brought back this tradition from Burma to the country, from Thailand to the country and then revived or uh, they developed Buddhism to be as it was before. When was the Buddhism decline in Sri Lanka? There are several times. Uh, uh, whenever there was an invasion from the Tamil Hindu kings, they were a Buddhist, then the Buddhism kind of declined in okay. the country. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. And how was or is Sri Lankan people welcome or respect uh, Bodhisattva compared to the Buddha? They respect more Bodhisattva or they respect more to the Buddha? Of course, uh, they respect more to the Buddha. Uh, as being Theravadins, they do respect the Buddha more than Bodhisattva. But however, uh, to most Sri Lankans, Bodhisattva is 
nothing alien or nothing other than the Buddha before the enlightenment. Therefore, there's no such conflict or such contradiction between these two uh, belief systems. As you can see, all the viharas, the, the shrine rooms in the country, uh, the wall paintings in that vihara or shrine room is, in, is uh, consist of uh, Jataka stories. Okay. So these Jataka stories, of course, the Bodhisattva, uh, the Buddha before enlightenment when he was a, was a Bodhisattva. Okay, because Bodhisattva is, Bodhisattva story is more interesting than. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of more easy to, to relate with people, yeah, normal yeah, people yeah. who yeah. live in daily life, who live in this secular life, than the Buddha or the disciples of the Buddha who just renounced the worldly life and they, they renounced and they lived uh, kind of separately from other worldly affairs. But when we look into the Bodhisattva, he was with the people. He was a normal person at most of the time. And, uh, and he was with the people and he encountered all these vicissitudes the, and problems that normal people encounter in daily life. Therefore, it's kind of relatable and kind of more practical in that sense. Metaya, is there any Sri Lankan monk who also practice bodhisattva idea like the Mahayana monks? Uh, or mostly they are Theravadin? Mostly they are, they are Theravadins. And, but we can see in many uh, books or uh, compositions that compiled in the uh, even in the 5th century AD, there is a mention that with the merits that I have accumulated by writing this book, may I be reborn as a, in the time of the Mithaya uh, Buddha. Or sometimes some people just wanted, may I become a Buddha? With the merits I have done, may I become a Buddha is also mentioned. Therefore, this, uh, this kind of belief also existed within the Sri Lankan monks as well. Okay. Okay, okay thank you, Metea, for your time. Okay, welcome. <laughs> okay. I'll see thank you, you soon. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I mean, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.